name is Megan Foster. I went to medical school at University of Massachusetts uh, Medical School in Worcester, Massachusetts. I am now a second year resident uh, practicing in family medicine at Swedish uh, First Hill Hospital in Seattle, Washington. So my name is Alessandra Petrillo. I'm from New Jersey. Um, I studied at St. George's University for medical school. I graduated there in 2015 and um, sorry, 2019. <laughs> I started in 2015, graduated 2019, ended up matching into um, internal medicine residency. I'm Jasmine Thompson. I'm from Martinsville, Virginia, and I'm currently a second year emergency medicine resident at LSU New Orleans. My name is Austin Carmack. I'm an MD I'm from UCF College of Medicine, so University of Central Florida in Orlando. I graduated in 2020 and um, in the middle of the pandemic, and I'm at Robert Packer Hospital right now. Um, in Sayre, Pennsylvania. So it's a small rural program. It's uh, one of the oldest programs uh, for surgical residency in the history. I've kind of always really wanted to be a primary care doctor. Um, I think I just always looked up to my own pediatrician growing up and I really loved the idea of knowing someone over a long period of time and seeing them change over that time. So I always wanted to do something operative from a young age because um, I had a head injury, uh, the preschool fracture um, as a toddler. And so I was in the medical field or kind of like the medical field saved my life, um, essentially. And I was in and out of hospitals, um, recovered without consequence, basically because of modern medicine. And so I always knew I wanted to, to be a physician or a doctor. Um, I, I knew I always wanted to do science. I was like the little nerdy kid with the toy microscope and like looking at bugs under the microscope and that kind of thing. Um, but medicine became my focus when I was in high school. Um, one of my nephews had a medical emergency and I got to spend a lot of time in the hospital and he's doing perfectly fine now. Um, but that kind of got me interested in it. And then I just stuck with it over the years. Uh, sketchy was essential for learning pharmacology and microbiology in med school. So, and I still <clears throat> refer reference my mental images uh, so, uh, in clinical practice. So, it completely changed how I got through my infectious disease course, how I still think about antibiotics, and I still am able to keep different things straight in my head. I, it, it really created a framework for how I could remember things easily. I still, I still used it for my step three exam, which you take, you know, sometime in between your first and second year of residency. Um, so I, I really think having those visual clues that um, help, help make really dense material, both dense and boring material, much more engaging. Um, it came to a point where I relied on sketchy to pass my exams because it's really hard to learn through lecture styles. Um, and uh, sketchy is one of those things that if you're a visual learner and you remember pictures and you can remember voices, it is like the ultimate um, way to to study. Um, I definitely think that it helped solidify a lot of like especially microorganisms. I'm a really visual person. I do art on the side. So when I learned about Sketchy, I was like, oh, like this is literally, it feels like it was made for me. And even now, like in residency, sometimes I think about like what antibiotic to choose for someone. And I can literally see some of the little drawings from Sketchy. <laughs> in terms of studying, like you should really, especially for all of your big, you know, step exams, really focus on what works for you and really, really try not to compare yourself to what others are doing. I think there's this incredible pressure to think, oh, well, someone is using this particular resource to study or they're doing X number of flashcards a day. And I think that can be really intimidating and um, it can just be, it can create a really toxic environment. So you really just have to figure out what your learning style is and know that that learning style might change as you move through med school and that's okay. And to be flexible and, and um, patient with yourself to figure that out. Oh, exposure. So um, you don't know something if you don't know it. Um, and so just, mm -hmm. if you think you're interested in it, just, um, you know, reach out to a preceptor or reach out to a mentor in that field and then try to get you immersed in with sure. it. 
So my advice is just to um, be persistent and um, continue, like, you know, continue learning. And just when you think you know something, don't give up and keep keep on being persistent because there are just so there's so much information in this field. And if you keep going back to the basics over and over and over again, things will continue to stick and make sense and utilizing sketchy in that way. Um, in the sense where, you know, say like even in my stage right now where I'm in residency, going back to those basics of micro, of farm, of pathology is going to make you a better doctor. So, and being a better doctor means that your patients are getting better care. And again, it all comes down to the basics. So that, that would be the advice oh. I would give. Um, I think one thing I wish I would have told myself more or what I could have told myself is just lean on the people around you, let people know what's going on. If you're having a bad day, you're having a hard time with, you know, whatever part of med school you're in, tell people because people are so much more willing to help than you'll ever know. 